Hello everyone. Welcome to Production Planning and Control Session on behalf of ICT. Our first module is an introduction to Manufacturing, Planning and Control, Enterprise Resource Planning and Demand Management. For efficient, effective and economical operation in a manufacturing unit of an organization, it is essential to integrate the production planning and control system. Production planning and subsequent production control follow adaption of production design and finalization of a production process. Our learning objectives for this chapter are as follows. MPC support activities, MPC system framework, MPC classification schema, enterprise resource planning, scope of ERP application, manufacturing planning and control with ERP. Then in demand management we will cover Visualizing customer order decoupling point, various environments of demand management, collaborating with other MPC modules, and finally, collaborative planning, forecasting, and replenishment. Now, MPC system is concerned with planning and controlling all aspects of manufacturing, including managing materials, scheduling machines and people, and coordinating suppliers and key customers. The manufacturing planning and control system is concerned with planning and controlling all aspects of manufacturing. Because these activities change over time and respond differently to different markets and company strategies, this model provides a model for evaluating responses to changes in the competitive environment. The important functions of the MPC system is to efficiently manage the flow of material, manage the utilization of people and equipment, and respond to customers' requirement by using the supplier's capacity to meet customers' demand. Manufacturing planning and control entails the acquisition and allocation of limited resources to production activities so as to satisfy customer demand over a specified time horizon. The support activities of the MPC system can be broken roughly into three time horizons, long term, medium term and short term. In the long term, the system is responsible for providing information to make decisions on the appropriate amount of capacity in terms of equipments, buildings, suppliers and so forth to meet the market demands of the future. In intermediate term, the NPC system is to match demand and supply in terms of volume and product mix. In terms of short term, detailed scheduling of resources is provided to meet production requirements. It involves time, people, materials, equipment and facilities and key to the success of this activity is to have right people working on right things. If you look at slide 3, this figure is a schematic diagram of the general MPC system that is used within a firm for planning and controlling its manufacturing operations. The figure is divided into three phases. The front end, which is a set of activities and systems for overall direction setting. Now this phase establishes the overall company direction for manufacturing planning and control. The engine. This encompasses the set of MPC systems for detailed material and capacity planning. Firms with a limited product range can specify rates of production for developing these plans. However, for firms producing a wide variety of products with many parts per product, detailed material planning can involve calculating requirements for thousands of parts and components using a formal logic called material requirements planning or the MRP. The backend is the one that depicts MPC execution system. Here again the system configuration depends on the products manufactured and production processes employed. For example, firms producing a large variety of products using thousands of parts often group all equipment of a similar type into single work center. Their shop floor system establishes priorities for all shop orders at each work center. Matching the MPC system with the needs of the firm can be properly scheduled. Other firms will group mixtures of equipment that produce a similar set of parts into work centers called production cells. For them, production rates and just-in-time systems for execution are appropriate. Now this figure shows the relationship between MPC system approaches. 
it shows the complexity of the manufactured product as expressed in the number of subparts and the repetitive nature of the production which is expressed as the time between successive units this figure demonstrates that the emphasis of mpc changes as the nature of the product it has been expressed as a time between successive units it also shows the relationship between mpc system approaches the complexity of the manufactured product as expressed in the number of subparts and the repetitive nature of the production which is expressed as a time between successive units the lower left hand corner shows a flow oriented manufacturing process typical of many chemical food petroleum and bulk product firms because products are produced in a in a stream instead of discrete batches virtually no time elapses between successive units with these processes the front end concern of the mpc system is primarily the flow rates that become the master production schedule typically these products have relatively few component parts so engine management is straightforward depending on how components are purchased the back end may involve some complexity typically these firms major cost is for raw materials all the transportation costs can also be significant now this also shows material requirements planning as spanning over a wide area mrp is often the platform for erp application and is the key to any mpc system involving management of a complicated part situation the majority of the manufacturing firms have this sort of complexity and mrp based systems continue to be widely applied the last form of mpc depicted in the figure the project type is applied to unique long lead time products such as ships and highly customized products here the primary concern is usually management of the time dimension related to time is cost so project management attempts to continually assess partially completed project status in terms of expected completion dates and costs some firms have successfully integrated mrp approaches with the problems of project management this is particularly effective in planning and controlling the combined activities of engineering and manufacturing the term enterprise resource planning represents a comprehensive software approach to support decisions concurrent with planning and controlling business erp system allows integrated planning across the functional areas in a firm the software should be multifunctional in scope integrated and modular it must facilitate classic manufacturing planning and controlling activities erp represents the software approach to integrate the applications of the program in finance manufacturing logistics sales and marketing and human resources along with other functions in a firm as per tom wallis and mike tremser erp is a set of management tools that balances demand and supply it has the ability to link customer and supplier into a complete supply chain it provides high degree of cross functional integration among sales marketing manufacturing logistics purchasing finance and new product development it is a business process for decision making it enables businesses to function with high level of customer service and productivity and simultaneously lower costs and inventories along with providing the foundation for effective e-commerce erp is designed for manufacturing excellence with visibility throughout the operation and embedded support for a wide variety of manufacturing process this includes make to stock make to order configure to order engineer to order just in time and materials control and lean operations now this figure depicts the scope of erp and is meant to show how a comprehensive information system uses erp as the core or the backbone of the information system a typical erp system is made up of functionally oriented and tightly integrated modules all the modules of the system use a common database that is updated in real time this figure shows the data that is used for calculating cash to cash cycle time the data is controlled by different functionaries within a company the inventory cost gives the value of the entire inventory the value of inventory depends on the quantities stored and also the cost of the inventory to the firm 
all three major functional areas affect the inventory account. The cost of sales is attributed to the costs that is incurred throughout the firm. This is expressed as a percentage of total sales. Sales means the total sales revenue over a given period of time. Accounts receivable is the amount owed to the firm by its customer. The receivable amount would depend on the firm's credit policy and its ability to deliver in a timely manner. Demand management. Now, demand management includes activities that range from determining or estimating the demand from customers through converting specific customer orders into promised delivery dates. It is a gateway module in manufacturing planning and control. It provides the link to the marketplace, sister plants, warehouses and other important customers. It also involves helping the manufacturing, planning and control system which is significantly beneficial to the firm. For many firms, planning the execution and controlling demand quantities and timings are day-to-day -day interaction with the customers. For firms, particularly in the process industry, the critical coordination is in scheduling large inter and intra company requirements. Now this figure provides a means for visualizing the customer order decoupling point as it might move from finished goods inventory through the company all the way back to the supplier. Different locations of the customer order decoupling point gives rise to various categories of manufacturing environments. Now there are various environments of demand management. It has been developed due to the wide range of orders given by customers and thus can be categorized as seen in the presentation. One is make to stock environments, the second is the assemble to order environment and third is the make to order environment. Make to stock environment, firms that serve their customers from finished goods inventory are known as make to stock firms. Here the key focus is on the maintenance of the finished goods inventories. The assemble to order environment, firms that combine a number of options together to meet customer specifications are called assemble to order firms. The main task of the demand management in this environment is to define the customer's order in terms of alternative components and options. The make to order environment. Now the firms that make customers product from raw materials, that is by assembling parts and components are make to order firms. Demand management plays a vital role in the external and internal communication. Forecast information must be provided to sales and operations planning. Detailed demand management must be communicated to master production schedule, that is MPS. Information on product availability must be made available to customers to streamline planning and manage day-to-day -day customer order activities. So communicating with other MPC modules include sales and operations planning, master production scheduling and managing demand. Now we already covered sales and operations planning which is to get the demand forecast and then execute the operations plan. In master production scheduling, as customers orders are received and entered in ARP, the detailed order information must be provided to the master production scheduler. In the same way, the demand management also needs information on the status of orders, capacity consumed and capacity available so that the consumer can be informed. And finally, it's about managing demand because demand management is the gateway module between the company and the marketplace. Collaborative planning, forecasting and replenishment. The concept of CPFR, collaborative planning, forecasting and replenishment is to enable customers and suppliers to work in tandem and improve the understanding and communication of product forecast information. It represents a major enhancement of the principles of demand management. It is a recent innovation and has dramatically improved the exchange of communication between customers and suppliers in forecasting product demand. It was developed by Voluntary Inter-Industry Commerce Standards Association to help retailers in fast-paced demand situations wherein they could improve their competitiveness in both cost and delivery performance. Collaboration across the supply chain has become a crucial element in the creation of business value in such a complex manufacturing environment. The collaborative planning, forecasting and replenishment process is a powerful tool to enhance the cooperation between partners from upstream to the vendors, suppliers and downstream to the customer. Now, from this 
entire chapter, we draw the following principles. The framework for MPC is general and all three phases must be performed, but specific applications necessarily reflect particular company conditions and objectives. Secondly, in supply chain environments, the MPC system must coordinate the planning and control efforts across all companies involved. Thirdly, manufacturing planning and control systems should support the strategy and tactics pursued by the firm in which they are implemented. Fourthly, different manufacturing processes often dictate the need for different designs of the MPC system. The MPC system should evolve to meet changing requirements in the market, technology, products and manufacturing processes. The sixth point is, the manufacturing planning and control system should be comprehensive in supporting the management of all manufacturing resources. An effective MPC system can contribute to the competitive performance by lowering costs and provide greater responsiveness to the market. And lastly, in firms that have an integrated ERP system and database, the MPC system should integrate with and support cross-functional planning through the ERP system. With this slide, we approach the end of this chapter. Thank you for your time today. I look forward to taking your questions in the Q&A session soon to follow.